Welcome to Kids Cup News. We are so excited to be here today. Today we have a special friend who is celebrating their fourth birthday today. <gasps> yes, it's someone I know very well. Me too. Happy birthday to you, my sweet Vivian. I love you, sweet girl. We do not want you to miss our awesome staycation on March 13th. Come join us for games, fun, and so much more. Miss Ashley, how do you know that the ocean is friendly? The ocean is friendly. I don't know. How? Because it waves. Oh, that's cute. It waves. <laughs> that's funny. That's oh, cute. I love the jokes on our campus kids. So, or Kids Cove News. That's, that's a wrap for Kids Cove News. News. See you next week. Hey, I Campus Kids, my name is Yancey. I want my life to be for the glory and the praise of God. Don't ever forget that God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Come on, let's sing and let's give him praise together right now as we shine and serve. God made me a part of his story. I believe all for his glory. Welcome to iCampus Kids. I'm Miss JJ, your Bible teacher, and I'm so glad you've joined me today. The Bible is God's word. God helped him write it so we can know for sure that everything in it is completely true. We've been reading about how the Israelites were exiles in captivity, but God brought many of them home to Jerusalem. 
God was working in the lives of the Jews who were still in other places, and he was also working in the lives of the Jews who went back to Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, God helped the people rebuild the temple and the city wall. When Ezra read God's law, the people wanted to cry over their sin. Different cultures do different things to show their sadness. What do you do when you are sad? Maybe you wear certain clothes or do certain things. If I was really sad, I might wear black. I might get on my knees and cry. What about you or your culture? What do people often do to show that they are sad? The Israelites did something special to show when they were really upset. One thing they did was wear sackcloth. Sackcloth was a rough material that was usually made from goat hair. It was really uncomfortable to wear. Another thing they did when they were really upset was sit in ashes or dust. Ashes are what is left behind after something is burned up. Israelites would sit in ashes and put ashes on their heads. Sometimes people would also fast. That means they didn't eat any food. Wearing sackcloth, sitting in ashes, and fasting were ways that Israelites showed they were very upset and distressed about something. They might be upset because of sin or because of some terrible situation that happened, like when Haman planned to kill all of the Jews. Understanding why they did these things can help us understand our passage today. I'm going to read from the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah comes after Ezra and the Old Testament. Ezra and Nehemiah used to be one big book, but long ago it was separated into the books we have in our Bibles. Together, they record how God brought his people back to Jerusalem and rebuilt the city, the temple, and the wall. Ezra and Nehemiah are books of history. They record true things that really happened with real people. I'm going to read my own paraphrase of some of Nehemiah chapter 9. While I read, act out what the people did. The Israelites got together again. Pretend to get together with other people. They didn't eat any food. They wore sackcloth. They put dust on their heads. Pretend to be very upset. They read from the book of the law of the Lord their God. Pretend to listen to someone reading from God's law. They confessed their sins. Pretend to confess your sins. They worshiped the Lord their God. Pretend to worship God. The Levites said a prayer that represented the people. Pretend to be praying. Great job acting out what the people did. We know the people were upset at the beginning of this passage. They read God's law, confessed their sins, worshiped God, and prayed. I wish we had time to read the whole prayer. The people glorified God for who he is and what he had done for them. I'm going to show you drawings that represent just some of the things the people praised God for in the prayer. When you see a drawing, see how fast you can guess what that drawing represents. After you have a moment to guess what it is, I'll read my own summary of the verse in Nehemiah that was about that event. What does this drawing represent? You alone are the Lord. You made the heavens. You created all the stars in the sky. You created the earth and all that is on it. You made the seas and all that is in them. You give life to everything. What does this drawing represent? You are the Lord God. You chose Abraham. You brought him out of Ur in the land of Babylon. You changed his name to Abraham. You made a covenant with him. You promised to give his family after him a land of their own. You have kept your promise, for you are righteous. What does this drawing represent? You did awesome signs and wonders against Pharaoh and the Egyptians. What about this one? You parted the Red Sea for the Israelites. They crossed through the sea on dry ground. What about this one? You came down on Mount Sinai. From heaven, you spoke to our people. You gave them just judgments, true laws, and good laws and commandments. What about this one? You gave them bread from heaven when they were hungry. What about this one? When they were thirsty, you brought them water out of a rock. Here's another one. But our people before us did not obey your commandments. But you are a God of forgiveness. You are merciful and compassionate. You are slow to get angry and unfailing in your loving kindness. You did not abandon them. Here's another one. You told their parents to enter the land. You told them to take it over. You brought their children into it. What about this one? But they didn't obey you. They turned against you. They turned their backs on your law. So you handed them over to their enemies who treated them badly. Then they cried out to you. 
You heard from heaven and your abundant compassion you sent deliverers to rescue them from their enemies. Then when they were arrested again, they went back to doing evil things. Then you handed them over to their enemies. When they cried out to you again, in your compassion you heard them from heaven and rescued them time after time. Two more, what about this one? You were patient with them for many years. By your spirit, you warned them through your prophets. Still, they would not listen. So you handed them over to the nations that were around them. Last one, what about this one? However, because of your abundant mercy, you did not put an end to them. You did not abandon them, for you are a merciful and compassionate God. Wow, that was a lot. And that was just some of the things that people praised God for in their prayer. The people had so much to be thankful for. God loved them so much and had taken such good care of them. What about you? What are some things you can praise God for? What has God done in your life? What do you know about God that you can praise him for? You can pray your own prayer, thanking God for who he is and for what he has done in your life. God's people remembered all he had done and promised to be faithful. God is gracious and compassionate. All along, God has been faithful to people who are unfaithful. We experience God's grace and compassion in Jesus, who gave his life so we can receive mercy and life forever. And now it's time for the Wheel of Wonder, the time in our lesson when we spin the wheel and wonder. What will our Wheel of Wonder question be today? It landed on pink. Our Wheel of Wonder question for today is, now that they were back in Jerusalem with the temple and wall, was everything good again? Nehemiah 9, 36 and 37 explain. So today we are slaves in the very land you gave to our people long ago. You gave it to them so they could eat its fruit and enjoy its good things. But we have sinned against you. So the great things the land grows go to the kings you have placed over us. They rule over our bodies and our livestock just as they please, and we are suffering terribly. Although many Israelites were back in Jerusalem, they were still under the rule of another nation. They weren't free to live as their own people with their own government. They had to give the kings of Persia some of what they grew. They were suffering terribly. Still, the people promised that they would follow God. Nehemiah 10, 29 records, the people make a firm agreement. They make a promise to follow the law of God. The law of God had been given through Moses, the servant of God. The people promised to carefully obey all of the commandments, rules, and laws of the Lord our God. Although the people confessed their sin and promised to follow God, there were still consequences from their sin. The consequences didn't all go away when the people turned to God, but God would be with them even as they suffered from the consequences of their sin. He is gracious and merciful. He would not abandon them. And that is very good. The people read the law, confessed their sin, worshiped God, and prayed. They remembered how God had been so faithful, merciful, and compassionate. They promised to follow God in the future. Even though the Persian king still ruled over them, they could count on God to be faithful to them. God is always faithful. Let's pray. Holy Father, we praise you for who you are and for all you have done. You sent Jesus to save us. You help us learn more about you and you help us follow you. Please help us to be faithful to you. You are always faithful. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Well, sweet friends, I love studying God's word with you today. There's so much more for us to learn together. Be sure to join me next time on iCampus Kids. Um, hey y'all, and can somebody tell me what's cooler than being cool? Oh, you know it's ice cold. Everybody say ice cold. All right, all right, all right. Now today we learned God's people remembered all that he had done for them and they promised to be faithful to him. That is great news. And that's what we need to remember, to always be faithful. All right, let's all be faithful. No, right now, friends, I need you to get up on your feet. Come on, because it is time for the last time in February to drive the bus, all right? If you're ready to drive the bus, somebody say, drive the bus. 
All right, let me hear you. I want you to be my echo. Drive the bus. Drive the bus. Drive the bus. Drive the bus. All right, friends. All right, it's time to drive the bus. So get two hands on the wheel, and I need you to repeat after me. Drive the bus. Drive the bus. Drive the bus. Drive the bus. All right, friends. We're ready to drive, but we got to start the bus. So get those keys out. Uh-oh. There's a whole lot of keys here, so shake them. Shake them. Shake them. Shake them. All right, let's start the, Start it up. Come on. Oh, yeah. Start it up real good. Two hands on the wheel. Drive the bus. Drive the bus. Drive the bus. Drive the bus. All right, friends. Uh-oh. You know what? We need to get some friends on. I see a whole lot of friends here, so let's slow the bus down. All right, we're gonna, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna open the door. We're gonna say, come on in, and say, move on back. All right, here we go. Open that door. Here we go. Come on in, move on back. Say it with me. Come on in, move on back. Say it again. Come on in, move on back. One more time. Come on in. Move on back. Let's close the door because our bus is packed now. So two hands on the wheel. Say, drive the bus. Drive the bus. Drive the bus. Drive the bus. All right, friends. Uh-oh. There's a storm coming. I see some gray clouds, and it's got a lot of rain in it. So we kind of can't see out the windshield. What do we got? That's right. Turn on the windshield wipers. Come on, everybody. Windshield wipers. Come on. Windshield wipers. Come on. We can see now. Windshield wipers. Come on. Windshield wipers. All right, we can see clear now. Uh-oh, but there's something else in the road and it's kind of big, so we can't run into it. What do we gotta do? That's right. Swerve, 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 swerve. All right, drive the bus. Drive the bus. Drive the bus. Drive the bus. Oh, hey friends, we got some people in the back said they need to go get some groceries. Okay, so let's pull the bus over. Yeah, there's a good store over here. All right, let's go on into the store. Everybody get your shopping cart. Shopping cart, wait to your neighbor. Shop okay, you know what? We gotta get some things off the top shelf. Everybody reach, put it in your cart. Come on, get those things off the top shelf. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, good job. Make sure you get some for your family too, okay? All right, let's go check out at the front. <laughs> all right, put all your stuff up on the, uh, on the, on the conveyor belt, yeah. Put it on up. okay, good job, uh-huh, uh -huh. What, okay, anybody bring any money? Oh, you'll pay for me? Okay, good job, all right, thanks guys. All right, let's get back on the bus, everybody. Somebody say, drive the bus. Drive the bus. Drive the bus. Drive the bus. <laughs> all right, you guys did a great job. Good job driving the bus. All right, friends, it's time for our last week of stand up if or sit down if. If you're ready to play, somebody say, let's play. <laughs> all right, all right. This is a good one, everybody. All right, everybody sit down, because I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna start. We're gonna start with stand up if you like chicken. Okay, I'm good, all right. Sit down if you like burgers, okay? Stand up if you like hot dogs. <laughs> Sit down if you like turkey. <laughs> all right, all right. Stand up if you like grapes. Oh, those are delicious. Sit down if you like apples. Okay, good. All right, this next one's gonna get crazy, everybody. Stand up if you like roller coasters. All right, you ready to stand? Okay, we're gonna do the roller coaster. Okay, follow me. Woo, woo. All right, here we go, we're going up a hill. Woo, 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 woo. One more time, woo, woo. All right, good job. All right, everybody. Now, sit down if, this is a good one, if you like water slides, okay? And as you sit down, like you're going on a water slide. All right, that's good. All right, guys, you did a great job with stand up or sit down. All right, you guys did a great job. Now, friends, I'm Hey Ya, and I love getting to be with you guys here at iCampus Kids. I hope you guys are having a great time at iCampus Kids. If you love iCampus Kids, somebody say, oh, I do. <laughs> all right, all right, friends. Now, before I get ready to go, can somebody tell me what's cooler than being cool? That's right, it's ice cold. On the count of three, let's all say ice cold. One, two, three, ice cold. All right, friends, I will see you around, and I hope you have a great day. Peace. I'm Hey Ya. Hey, boys and girls, it is so good to see you again today on iCampus Kids. We hope you've had a great time listening to Miss JJ hanging out with Hey Ya and singing with Yancey. Today, we are going to play a game. Yay. We have this muffin tin, and in each of the sections, there is a characteristic of God. 
Using a spoon, we are going to toss a pom-pom ball toward the muffin tin, and whichever characteristic it lands in, we are going to tell about a time when we experienced this characteristic of God. Yeah, All right, are really you ready? Cool. I think so. Okay. okay, let's do it. All right, let's do it. Okay. Hey, here we go. You're too close. Let's okay. get back. All right, here we go. Ah! Nope. That's not gonna work. <laughs> How many cotton balls do we have, actually? I know. <laughs> oh, I'm so close. Okay, I may just have to. There okay, go. I got it. <laughs> I got it. Okay. Whatever works. I got loving. Yes. God loves me so much that He sent His Son to die on the cross for my sin yes. and rose again to save me. And I'm so very grateful for that. Yes. Yes. Okay, your turn. Okay, Let's my see. turn. I've got one. Oh, you've got one? Okay. Right here in my hand. Now let's right. see. Let's see. You're really good at this. I don't know. We'll see. I was oh, close. Too far. Here you go. It's really kind of fun. I know. I do like this game. <laughs> you have to do it yeah. just it takes, right. It takes a couple of practice. Not too much. Not too little. Oh, there we go. Good job. Okay. Good job. Oh, good. Let's see what I got. Okay. Oh, I got faithful. Faithful. Okay. That's good. You know, I know that when I pray to God, mm -hmm. He is faithful mm. to hear me. Yes. And He will always hear and answer my prayers. Yes, you are exactly right. Maybe not right. the way I was thinking, but He always answers them. But He always answers them. Okay, let's do one more. Let's see if I can get it. Okay. Let's see. <gasps> oh! Okay, I'm going to that one because it <laughs> definitely good. landed in that it one. It sounds good. I got compassion. There are many times that even though I know the right thing to do, I make a wrong choice. And I know that God shows me compassion by loving me and always forgiving me when I ask him to forgive me. Just like God was faithful to keep his promises to the Israelites, and he is faithful to keep his promises to us. Mm -hmm. See you next week on iCampus Kids. I want to teach you guys a new worship song today. God is calling us to be a faithful people because that is his character. He is a faithful God. He never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. We can trust him because he will never change. He's always there for us. Sing along with me as you catch on to this song. But let's celebrate the goodness and the faithfulness of our God. Promise maker, promise keeper, you finish what you begin. A provision through the desert, you see it through till the
Amen. Thanks for singing in worship today.